when you manage a patient in the ICU, infections constitute a major threat or a major challenge to an intensivist. And I think if you follow the infection control practices in your ICU, in your setup, you can prevent a lot of the problems which you face in managing these patients. So I'll ask Dr. Rajesh Pandey, who is the chairman and in charge of the intensive care unit at uh, BL Kapoor Hospital, Delhi. So what are the challenges of uh, infection control practices in our country? Well, India is unique in the sense that uh, we have a very high incidence of ESBL bugs in the country. We are fighting with the problem of uh, Acinetobacter infections and of late 2004 onwards, there has been an increase in the NDM1 globally, which some people are contributing to, uh, you know, India. Uh, as a whole, I think uh, it's, a, it's a much broader issue uh, if we look at it in the pan-India context. Uh, one is the specialty is new, although it has emerged now. Infection has been realized as a major issue uh, of late. Most of the organized hospitals, corporate sector hospitals, have a very good infrastructure to control, to monitor and to implement safe infection control practices. But large part of India, including government hospitals, smaller hospitals, nursing homes, they are still, you know, they have a long way to go. Uh, and regarding the current uh, situation... I think the, uh, uh, it involves from the structure, the kind Absolutely. of structure you make Absolutely. before you start your ICU. Absolutely. And it involves a lot of expense to have an air exchanges. How many Absolutely. air exchanges should be there? Uh, you know, 10 to 12 air exchanges is what is recommended. Uh, you have, uh, you know, uh, brought about a very good point because a lot of Indian ICUs, if you see for economy reasons for accommodating more patients, are dormitory type. They are open kind of an ICU rather than a separate room kind of, uh, of ICU for every patient, which is the standard norm in the Western world. So this one reason is it is easy. The construction cost is less. Second, you can accommodate more patients. But at the same time, the spread of infection is uh, very high with this kind of open approach because a nurse or a doctor can easily, you know, pick up any object from the nearby patient and the infection from that patient can spread to the uh, next patient. So designing have to be improved. Second, most of the ICUs, they will accommodate all patients as far as possible. So overcrowding is an important issue. Uh, the number of beds in the ICU should be fixed and no extra patient should be admitted because then you are giving that risk of infection to the already...